Hi, I'm Captain Mike, and this video is part two of Ash Glaze on the Barbie, and uh, I call this one Witch's Brew, and I'll tell you why, and it will become apparent in a minute. Uh, but first, let me say that uh, I'm not a chemist. I'm not a master uh, glaze mixer. I've never really mixed any glaze before uh, from scratch, other than making these ash glazes right here. And I've learned a few things though, and we are going to experiment before this video is over on some things that we can do to maybe, I won't say make the ash glazes any better, but to, to do some different things with them, and we'll see how that turns out. Uh, but uh, first let me tell you that some of the things that I mentioned in the first video, actually in the last two videos, uh, and more recently in part one, that ball clay, I was wrong, ball clay is not the way to go as a medium to add, to add to your ashes to make a glaze. Ball clay by itself is not a normal clay that you would use to slip cast or to, to render to a, sub, um, to a clay body. So, I don't know why I use it, let's just say I have a lot of it and I thought, hey, this would be great, but I found out it lacks some properties. So I mixed up some more uh, ash glaze and what I used in this one was a mid-fire clay body that I happen to have on hand, uh, one that you throw on the wheel. I just flattened it out, let it dry, ground it up, and added it to my ashes 50-50 to see if the additives in that clay uh, would work differently than the ball clay, and of course we've already done the red art. So, uh, with that, uh, let's kind of get on with this video and see what we have. Let's kind of start with the beginning and give you an overall of what we're working with here. Uh, I started with 15 ounces of ash made from uh, barbecue briquettes and I added it to 15 ounces of various kinds of clays. Red art, ball clay, and some Phoenix clay body that's a mid-fire clay you throw on the wheel. And uh, I mixed those 50-50. Then I, after I did that we run some tests and you saw those in video one. Then I took and I added uh, five ounces of silica, which is just regular silica that you can buy. There's nothing fancy, and we'll kind of say why we did that in a little bit. And I added some feldspar, four ounces of feldspar. And this Bonami actually is nothing, the original is nothing but feldspar. And it comes in 12 ounce cans, so I split it into three and uh, mixed it all up. So, there we go. Here's what I've got. I mixed up, I'm not gonna go through all the unboxing, but these each have uh, uh, ball clay in them, and ash, and they have the uh, additives. The, the ball clay, I mean the, uh, the feldspar and the uh, silica was added to these. Then I came back when I put 10 ounces of of each mixture, in this case the ball clay, in these I added uh, a tablespoon of colorant. And the colorant that I added in these was uh, cobalt carbonate. Cobalt carbonate. And I added some copper carbonate to one. And to the other one, I added some Mason Sunshine Yellow. Now, it goes without saying that these colors can go on and on forever. I have many more. I just chose those three. I'm already running out of test uh, cups, but we'll go with those three and see how they do on each of these. So, I put a tablespoon in each of these and stirred them up. I probably could have done with less. Uh, maybe a, a teaspoon, but we got we have what we have. 
So I took and I brushed all of these and uh, let them dry, put three coats, and then I fired them uh, on a uh, fast glaze fire in my kiln at cone six. So here's what we have. We'll start with the cobalt. Now I was trying to get uh, some shine, extra shine, and see what the color would do. And that's the reason for the silica. It's supposed to add uh, shine. It's the main ingredient in most glazes. Uh, and I wasn't trying to formulate a glaze. I was trying to gussy up my ash glazes. So here's what we have. We'll try to keep it short. This is the cobalt blue. Okay. This was one right here is on the red clay, the uh, bisque square that was red. This one is on white. It does have some shine to it, just semi-matte, but not what I was heading for. I'm sure a reformulation of the silica and the felspar and all that would fix that. Don't worry about it. That's something that you all can, can try to do. I was just shooting in the dark at this. Like I said, I'm no chemist. So, but that is the blue. That is cobalt. And that's ash glaze. It has texture. You can feel it. And uh, probably would have been better dipped, but I didn't. These containers weren't really big enough to dip. So I didn't dip. This one is the copper carbonate. And it was supposed to be kind of green. And you can see that there are some nice green on here. Uh, I didn't do exactly what I wanted to do there again. Thicker coats may be different. You can see this one. That's the green. You may like that mottled effect. Again, they have texture. The texture comes from the ash and the glaze. And then we have the sunshine yellow. And uh, you can see that the white came out really, really nice. And the red looks kind of greenish. Okay. Again, they all have sort of a matte finish. Some are just a little shinier than others. And that is what you got on the ball clay. Now, the next one we're going to get is going to be the, uh, the one that I used the Phoenix uh, clay body on and changed it out for the ball clay. So let's just see what we've got. We will start with the uh, cobalt blue. And as you can see on the white, it's shinier right off the bat. There's something in a regular clay body that causes it to shine. Because the ball clay has the same thing in it that this does. So the additives really didn't do a whole lot. That's the white. Nice cobalt color. A little shine to it. Darker, almost greenish tinge on the uh, uh, red, the red clay body. On the green... Or the co a copper cobalt, a copper carbonate. Uh, it uh, on the red, it didn't shine quite as much, but there's a little shine to it, and it's got a nice mottled effect. It would be interesting to put on a nicer clay body on. I say a clay body on something I've thrown or something I've slip cast a figure or something to see how it comes out, and I will do that. There's a copper carbonate on a white piece. Why the difference has got to do with the porosity, I'm sure. You could, you could experiment literally with this for years and never figure it out. I could do it for years and never figure it out. But, I'm showing you what I have. This is the sunshine yellow. Very bright, nice yellow, semi-matte. And it goes almost a greenish color on the red, okay? So that is what you get with using two clays, the ball and the phoenix, that are literally a white clay body. I mean, they, 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 they're white. And the last one here we have is using the red art, which is a red clay body. So we're going to see how that reacts to all this. And first we'll start off again with the cobalt. Carbonate, which is basically makes blue glazes, and it's interesting. On this red piece, you can see how it kind of, kind of mottled a little bit. Not quite as shiny as the uh, regular clay, 
and the, it didn't do much at all on the white. But there again, it's a red clay body, so it's going to change the color somewhat. And the copper carbonate, which is this? Yeah, this is copper carbonate. It's interesting. It come out kind of a kind of a brownish two tone. Uh, very little greens, maybe some greens in here. Depends on what kind of light you look at it. And oddly enough, on the red. It come out looking kind of real dark olive green, but look how shiny it is. So it just shined right up on this red. And then we lastly have the yellow, the Mason Stain Sunshine Yellow. Predictably, it's yellow, but darker yellow on the uh, on the white, and it's darker because of the uh, red arc clay we used. And the red one come out again semi shiny. But uh, interesting. They're all kind of mottled looking, but none of them so far have been as shiny as whichever one I had. This one's pretty shiny. Okay. So the, the shining on them changes a little bit depending on the clay body used in the ash clays and. Uh, the porosity of the bisque piece, I'm sure. Now, just for grins and giggles, and I, I did this piece right here, uh, just a larger cup, and I attempted to put uh, cobalt, copper carbonate, sunshine yellow, and then a little bit of just natural, uh, the uh, Phoenix uh, ball clay, I mean, Phoenix clay mix, and dipped it in there and put it on the inside. None of it went shiny on this, okay? Uh, don't know why. Now again, this was done with a brush, it was not dipped. It's not pretty at all. I was hoping to get something a little more interesting, but you do get colors, and I'm sure that if you put thicker coats of whatever you, you know, whatever you make here on it, uh, you know, this is kind of thin, but if you put thicker coats and, and, and work with it, you'll get different results. It just shows that you can color it. You don't have to be stuck with just browns and tans, which is kind of what we got, you know, on the original stuff. You know, some light colors. Uh, you know, you, 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 don't, you never know exactly. That was, that was a white bisque with red art and ash. That was ball clay. And it was the same with these. You can see this was uh, a little different. So, uh, that all has the same hues of either gold kind of or browns or tans. So, mixing your various colors, assuming that you use colors that are, that will take the temperature and won't burn away. You have to use chemicals and, and colorants that will stand the temperature you're going to fire to. And I think another experiment worthy of doing would be firing some of this stuff to cone tin. None of this bisqueware is cone tin clay. I have some in the works. I don't know whether I've got the nerve or to try another experiment with a cone clay, I mean cone tin clay bisqueware and the same stuff. Uh, and, you know, I'm firing it up to cone tin to see what it'll do. If any of y'all think that's worth me fooling with, and you're not so bored out of your mind that you'd like to see what these ash glazes will do, fire to cone tin, I will try to do a short video with less explanation and just more results. Y'all let me know. Uh, there's endless possibilities here. I just wanted to share with you the few things that come to my mind and I could try. And this is what we have. So let me know what you think. Comments, tips, uh, anything like that is always, uh, enjoy, I enjoy them. I enjoy y'all commenting on this stuff. So that's pretty much it. I'm Captain Mike. It's my video, uh, and I'm out of here.